It's Tuesday, November 23rd. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel, and today we're going to get into the consequences of the expansion of the 5G network and the possible implications with automatic landing capability of airliner type aircraft, specifically interference with radar altimeters. As a triple seven pilot, I'm required to remain current and qualified to do what's called a maneuver, what's called automatic landing, a category three landing in the Boeing triple seven. And just the other day we did one coming into Los Angeles as the weather was deteriorating enough to where the weather was beginning to get below category one minimums, about a half mile visibility. And so we decided to let's go ahead and set up for the worst case scenario and do a category three auto land, which gives us the ability to land in as little as 300 feet runway visual range or visibility down the runway. It's basically a landing almost in the blind. There's no decision height or altitude associated with this approach. You are simply allowing the air aircraft to do the landing itself. In order for the aircraft to do the landing itself, it has to have triple redundant systems all working perfectly in order to perform this maneuver. Then my job as the first officer is to simply monitor this equipment and if in the event anything goes wrong during the final approach portion and the green light for category three landing goes away, I simply just say go around we don't argue about it. We don't try to figure it out. We just go around because we do not have time to troubleshoot and then sort out the problem after we've safely gotten away from the ground. Now there's a lot of equipment on board the aircraft that help us do it. And again, it's got to be in a triple redundant format, but the one piece of critical equipment that can automatically land the aircraft for us is the radar altimeter. It's basically an analog piece of equipment that was designed well years ago under certain specifications that were of the state of the art at the time. But now we've got a 5G network that is encroaching on the frequency range of these radar altimeters, creating a possible interference problem. Now the radar altimeter is used for a wide variety of reasons in the aircraft, the auto landing being the most critical. And it also helps us out with things like terrain awareness, getting too close to the terrain that's used with enhanced GPW, GPS information, or we call it GIPWIS. It's also used in um, air traffic uh, collision avoidance maneuvers. It's also used in wind shear avoidance maneuvers. All those different functions use the radar altimeter to some degree, but the most critical portion is auto land. The radio altimeter becomes effective at about 2,500 feet. The radio altimeter has a transmitter and a receiver on board the aircraft. This transmitter only puts out about one watt of power of energy to make this work. It sends out a pulse of energy or a pulse of frequency, changing frequencies, that is reflected off the ground and received by the aircraft and that difference in time is what determines the altitude of the aircraft straight down below the aircraft. At two, uh, 300 feet, 200 feet, then the radar altimeter automatically calls off for us 50 feet, 40 feet, 30 feet, 20 feet. At 50 feet on an auto land with everything coupled up, it will automatically get the aircraft into the flare mode and it will automatically cause the autopilot to perfectly flare the aircraft and touch down right in the touchdown zone because you're also using, using the localizer signal for lateral deviation and the glide slope signal for vertical deviation. That coupled with the radar altimeter reading the altitude above the ground is what gives you the perfect auto land and it really works well. I mean that thing lands better than I can and <laughs> it's very impressive. It's nerve wracking. You're on the edge of your seat. You're constantly get ready to go around. You're basically covering the toga switches that if in the event anything goes wrong, you just hit the toga switch and go around. And the critical thing about an auto land is if something goes wrong in the final number of feet of the auto landing, you may initiate a go around, say from 100 feet or a 50 feet, and the aircraft will probably touch down. You will do a bounce and go off of the runway. And you better have that aircraft over the runway when you do that bounce and go or touch and go. 
Now in the past this has been a concern with 3 and 4G uh, wideband communications, cell phone communications, but now with 5G the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, is auctioning off a critical band of frequencies very close to the frequencies that our radar altimeter operates and we'll go inside and take a look at this in closer detail here in a moment. So we've got four big factions that are involved in a power struggle over these frequency bands and this has been an ongoing battle and this is quite frankly how the sausage is made when it comes to regulating the airwaves. We all want 5G because, especially in urban areas, because we need, we want higher speed internet. We want faster internet. We want to be able to watch the Blanco Lirio channel and I want to be able to blast something up quickly. In order to do that, I need, they, the telecommunications industry needs bandwidth. They can't make the uh, devices any more powerful. That's already limited, but they need more frequencies. They need more bandwidth. And that's why they are making a grab for these frequencies near the radar altimeter band. So if you follow the money in this situation, you can see that there is huge money behind the telecommunications industry. And so the FCC and all the politicians, of course, they all want high speed internet in their jurisdictions. And so the FCC, if you, well, you look at the document I'll post inside here, they very much want to auction off these frequencies to the telecommunications industry. On our side of the fence is the lonely FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, and they don't have exactly all the ability to understand exactly what all the implications are of this frequency merge or this, this, uh, this potential interference or conflict of frequencies. And so the FAA relies on a third party called the RTCA, the Radio Tele... I'm gonna read it, read it straight. And so the FAA relies on a third party called the RTCA, the Radio Technical Communi Commission for Aeronautics. They've been around since the 30s, and they are a, a, a group of electronic engineers and peers, volunteer, that help the FAA with these sort of issues. And the RTCA has recently published an over 278 page report that points out the possible interference problems that this new 5G network may have, may propose to the airlines and other forms of aviation such as helicopters because they need to use the radar altimeter for their TAWS systems, the train awareness systems. They, the helicopters need to get into these various hospitals uh, in various weather and they need that radar altimeter to work for them in those applications and also for general aviation. Part 135 and some of the more sophisticated parts of general aviation also use radar altimeters. So the volunteer engineers and scientists at the RTCA have taken an initial look at the problem by basically bench testing a bunch of radar altimeters and bench testing to the best of their ability to try to replicate real life scenarios. For example, real category three approaches, particularly the one into Chicago is what they modeled after, and add to that mix five potential 5G interference from the very frequencies that the FCC is fixing to auction off here and they have found that with a certain level of safety of about a six decibel safety level they have found that in their laboratory testing there is a high degree of possibility of interference they were able to reproduce in the lab interference that could cause very much a problem for radar altimeters now because this is only done on the bench theoretical bench work and not empirically derived, we'd have no real data from the real world of this yet. The right away, the 5G Americas, the the group representing the telecommunications industry, immediately poo pooed the uh, report from the RTCA, saying that it was an unrealistic look at the problem, and of course that the 5G network will pose no problems whatsoever to the airline industry. I think we got another problem to look at. I hope Steve Dixon from the FAA takes a closer look at this and really listens to what those scientists at the RTCA are telling them about these possible interference issues. Let's go inside and take a closer look. First, let's start with a report from the RTCA. This is the advisory group of scientists and engineers to the Federal Aviation Administration. 
This was done in October of 2020. And it explains here, the RTCA Incorporated is a not-for-profit corporation formed to advance the art and science of aviation and aviation electronic systems for the benefit of the public. This is the report that I believe holds the most water. And that question is shown right here. This is the frequency for our radar altimeters or radio altimeters, 4,200 to 4,400 megahertz. And the portion of the proposed 5G band goes from 3,700 to about 3,980 megahertz, leaving a little more than just 200 megahertz spacing between the desired 5G frequencies and the radio altimeter frequencies. And again, these radio altimeters only put out about one watt worth of power. Now, this green line is interesting, and I had to employ the help of a retired um, electric engineer to electrical engineer to help me explain this. The slope of this green line represents the filtering capability of the modern day radar altimeters that already exist in today's fleet of aircraft. It is very hard, if not almost impossible, to create a iron door filter that prevents any kind of spurious emissions or interference from nearby neighboring frequencies. Each filter has a certain amount of slope to it to prevent interference. And where these two slopes meet, therein lies potentially a problem. So some of the various threats that these scientists studied were the biggest threat is from the base station itself or the use of telephones on the ground. That was pretty much determined to not be a factor or the use of 5G telephones on board the aircraft. That's why the PA is regarding please leave your personal devices in airplane mode are so important. In that case, that did represent a serious threat to the radar altimeter on board the aircraft now a thing to consider about these base stations is that um, the aircraft remember if the aircraft is at a thousand feet that signal has to drop down a thousand feet reflect off the ground and return to the aircraft a thousand feet two thousand feet total the power of that signal is attenuated during that trip the base station only needs to send the signal from the base station up to the effective altitude of a thousand feet. So the aircraft has <laughs> got a 2,000 foot distance to lose its power, get interfered with. Whereas the base station, at one point, the base station is going to win over the power of the base station is going to win over the power of the aircraft. Now, that being said, the base station is primarily designed to beam down to capture the cell phones of the people on the ground, and they are not necessarily aimed up at the aircraft. But what is going to be critical is the placement of these 5G base stations in and around locations of Category 3 ILS approaches at these major airports, also around the various hospitals that helicopters need to use. As part of their report, they modeled the ILS Category 2 and Category 3 ILS runway 27 left at Chicago's O'Hare. Notice down here, Category 3, there are no minimums. RVR of 6, 600 feet runway visual range. You're basically landing in the blind. There's no decision altitude, no decision height. The aircraft is going to automatically land. And they look at the geometry of this approach, and then they look at the placement of current 3G and 4G base stations and basically converted these stations in the lab to 5G stations, putting out their nominal power and what interference that might have on this instrument approach. They did the same thing with some of these helicopter hospital approaches in, in uh, urban areas. This is in uh, Houston. Now, they break this report down into usage categories. Usage category one, large fixed wing aircraft, like the airlines. Two, small medium fixed wing aircraft. And three, helicopters. And after pages and pages and pages of data, let's get to the main argument. And here we can find a summary of the results 
based off of the uh, runway 27 left category 2 and 3 approach, both for usage category 1 up here. This is the radar altimeter for airliners, the black line, with a 6 decibel safety barrier built into it. And we can see that interference does exceed these levels significantly right here at about 275 feet. Again, this is assuming that the existing 3 and 4G base stations were powered up as 5G stations right along the path of the final approach into Chicago. So for airliners, yeah, it even exceeds the, the, the primary power output of the radio altimeter itself here at 275 feet and then it penetrates again into the safety zone here at oh, 650 feet and around a thousand feet and for all of the light aircraft or medium-sized aircraft the parameters were exceeded greatly so they could expect a lot of interference for the smaller aircraft and here they summarize what some of the outcomes may be Remember, we have at least two radar altimeters in a auto land capable aircraft. One, both radar altimeters could become in, inoperative. Or two, one radar altimeter become inop, while the other radar altimeter provides erroneous altitude readings. Three, both radar altimeters provide erroneous readings which do not agree. In these cases, the auto land system is going to say no land three, and you're just going to have to go around, and you'll be notified of that. And this one is kind of nefarious number four both radar altimeters provide erroneous altitude readings which are in agreement now i don't know if the autoland system will capture that catch that if both radar altimeters are in agreement but they are wrong for usage category three i.e helicopters coming into the landing zones on Hospitals, yes, they found interference levels that exceeded that of the safety margin built into the radar altimeters. So in summary, on page 88, this report says that this does represent a major risk of harmful interference to radar altimeters of all types of civil and commercial aircraft caused by 5G telecommunications in this frequency band of operational scenarios and the FCC is reminded that look we were here first the radar altimeters were here first the 5G network is the new neighbor on the block and that if interference is found to be true on the behalf of aviation which was here first then the 5G operation is obliged to to either power back or shut down or move further away from the frequency range of the radar altimeters because aircraft were here first. Next up is the 5G America's white paper. This is the telecommunications industry telling us that all is well. There will be no interference with radar altimeters, and yet they haven't done a single bit of testing themselves, as far as I can tell from this report. Instead, they are only disputing the report by the RTCA. This report gives us a broad overview of the 5G spectrum that they want to use and that some 5G has already been employed overseas and yet they have not, as of yet, received any reports of interference with radar altimeter operations overseas. And here they go over the specific frequencies they need or want to use. They basically need to build a bigger pipe to get more data through quicker. Now here in chapter four, they get specifically into radar altimeters and state that the FCC recognized that radio altimeters are a critical aeronautical safety of life system, primarily used at altitudes under 2,500 feet, but concluded that well-designed equipment should not ordinarily receive any significant interference, let alone harmful interference, given these circumstances. Furthermore, the FCC noted that they expect the aviation industry to take account of the RF radio frequency environment that is evolving below the 3980 megahertz band edge and take appropriate action if necessary to ensure the protection of such devices. Well, this is where the FCC and the FAA don't quite see eye to eye or don't quite understand the process here as the, everything on board an aircraft is FAA PMA TSO approved parts, manufacturer authorization and technical standard order. 
this takes time, loads of time. That's why technology is so slow to change in the aviation industry is everything has to go through this process, unlike the FCC, what the FCC is used to. And so for the... I would say, okay, well, a good broadband providers, are you willing to upgrade all of the radar altimeter devices in all the airliner aircraft before you start encroaching on these frequencies, or are you somehow willing to pay for this for this upgrade? Getting filters, remember, the airlines came here first. They were designed state-of-the-art at the time with no neighbors nearby. These filters will need to be changed significantly in order to minimize or prevent any interference as is currently being proposed by 5G. And then here in paragraph 4.2, they address the RTCA report specifically. In parallel, the aviation industry has been providing studies to the FCC during the proceeding. However, these studies have significant shortcomings, in particular, the engineering analysis dated on 7 October 2020 from the RTCA. That's the report we just got through discussing was overly conservative when reevaluating real world conditions. Conclusions of the study would be different as discussed hereafter. And the same is true for any other study that came along their way, according to 5G Americas. And then they proceed to pick apart the RTCA report without any engineering data derived by themselves. I want to see your math, 5G Then here in uh, chapter 4.4, they go on to provide some real-world examples where 5G has been deployed and there have been no reports yet of any interference in Japan, South Korea, or Europe. Now here's from the FCC, the mid-band spectrum auction. FCC begins mid-band spectrum auction October 5, 2021. The FCC today kicked off a mid-band spectrum auction to support next-generation wireless services, including 5G, in the 3.45 gigahertz band. Auction 1110 will make available 100 megahertz of of, uh, continuous mid-band frequencies. From FCC Acting Chairwoman Jessica Rosenworcel, We are moving with record speed and collaboration to free up more mid-band spectrum for 5G. These airwaves are a critical part of unlocking the 5G promise everywhere in the country. I want to thank the FCC staff who have worked so hard to start this auction this year. And I want to thank our partners at NTIA and the Department of Defense for working with us to free up this spectrum of 5G. Bidding in the first phase of the auction will kick off at 10 a.m., and in this case, I can't, that number is so big, I can't even, is that $14,775,354,000 based on January 14th, 2021 estimate? So that's where the, that's not where the bidding starts. The huge money involved in this. As a result of this controversy, this has resulted in a delay in the game, a delay of one month. But look at the spending that's, going on with this the money behind this verizon communications is spending 45 billion dollars on the c-band auction at&t 23 billion t-mobile 9 billion there's a lot of pressure to get this pushed through a lot of investment pressure and there's nothing the faa can do in one month's time about this situation we did however get a weekly a weekly wrote written uh special information airworthiness directive stand by let me find that here it is special airworthiness information bulletin air 21 dash 18 from the faa This SAIB recommends that radio altimeter manufacturers, aircraft manufacturers, and operators voluntarily provide to federal authorities specific information related to the altimeter design, functionality, specifics, and deployment, and the usage of radio altimeters on the aircraft, and that they test and assess their equipment in conjunction with federal authorities. Well, what test? Results from that testing and assessment should be reported to the appropriate civil authorities and spectrum regulators. The FAA is currently 
collaborating with the FCC and the NTIA, the National Telecommunications and Information Administration, to assess the need for mitigation beyond the recommended action in this informational bulletin. This, they're so far behind on this. So they want radio altimeter manufacturers to test their equipment and determine their vulnerability to interference and their current filters on board their their equipment. Aircraft manufacturers want to have all their radar altimeters tested and checked for the possibility of interference problems. And operators and pilots Remind passengers that all portable electronic devices are allowed for transport, checked in baggage, should be turned off and protected from accidental activation. Remind passengers that all portable electronic devices in the cabin and any carried on the aircraft to be in non-transmitting mode or turn them off, in other words, airplane mode. Seek information from the manufacturers of the aircraft and radio altimeters on possible effects of interference. Operators should ensure their pilots are aware of the potential degradation of radio altimeter capabilities and any means to compensate for in-flight radio altimeter anomalies. Consider both erroneous altimeter readings and the loss of altimeter function. Great. How many of us are going to end up going around if in the event there is an interference problem and how is that going to back up a backlog of traffic if this should become a problem? Operators should ensure their pilots are aware of the potential degradation of capability of safety systems and other equipment dependent on radio altimeters, like the TCAS and the JIP Wiz and the, and the uh, wind shear learning system. Operators should consider the potential loss of pilot trust in dependent aircraft safety systems in the assessment of existing and development of new crew procedures. You cannot, we spend an extraordinary amount of time in the simulator teaching people to trust the instruments, trust the gauges, trust the equipment that you are given to work with here. And now we're throwing that trust right out the window, potentially. Operators and pilots who experience radio altimeter anomalies should notify air traffic controllers as soon as practical. Reports should include as much detail as possible, include information to describe the anomaly. Should we'd like to, this, uh, I don't know. There's, <laughs> this is an ongoing battle. It's not the first rodeo we've gone to with uh, the FCC and radio frequencies. I hope this gives you a better information, better understanding of what we're up against here in the industry with the, uh, app, with the encroachment of 5G into the radio frequency spectrum that is right next to that of radar altimeters in not only airliner type environments, but also helicopter operations and general aviation as well. Again, thanks so much for your support of this channel over on Patreon that make this content possible. Pulling this kind of information together takes a lot of time. Thank you so much for your support. See the links below for all these reports. Let me know in the comment section below what you think, especially you electrical engineers out there. Take a good look at this uh, data, especially the R. TCA report and see what you think. Let me know in the comments below. See you here.